Nation, we back. In today's episode, we're going to be doing this article here out of Fierce. This is kind of like the first public, um, I should say, publication, digital publication about this offer from Fierce. It's Verizon's new unlimited plan. It's called Welcome Unlimited. We did a video um, yesterday kind of when I got like the inside scoop on what was going on. And then we did a podcast later in the evening. I'm going to link both of those videos down in the description. Also link this article. I want to kind of take in some of the elements of what's being pitched publicly. I want to talk about some of the perceptions that some of the nation members voted yesterday in a poll about this and kind of their perceptions if it's good or a bad plan. And then I want to talk about like how this is going to play out for Verizon as a company and what this means and what it tells us. All right. So to get things going first, this plan comes in at $30 per line on a multi-line, four-line deal. In and of itself, the price is attractive. There are quite a few caveats, though. All right, single line at sixty-five bucks, two hundred forty-dollar Verizon e-gift card per line. When you bring in and port in, right from another company, you know to switch, you can you can save money. I mean, there's there are attractive elements to this when you look at the pricing. It's the thing about Verizon that many people have said is their main problem, and that is cost. I have heard congestion has been an issue. There are a lot of band 13 only sites in some people's experience. So that could be another thing to consider. But namely, what I always hear, and it echoes through the halls of the SMT Nation, it's pricing. So here it is. Here is their entry-level option to get people in on the lowest price possible. So this is supposed to be their highly competitive price, which in my estimation is specifically targeting the base essentials, the T-Mobile essentials plans, and... I think also cable, like when we look at the MVNO cable operators, all right? So we're talking about Spectrum Mobile and we're talking about Xfinity Mobile because the price point is right there. Now, when we ran the poll on, on how the nation felt about this plan, the outcome was pretty clear. Uh, for the most part, the nation didn't really approve of this as a winner. It was like something like three to one. Three said it's a no-go. One said it's a go. So when 75% of the nation says something like, no, nah, I'm not interested, this is not a good deal, that resonates with me saying it's not really designed for the network tech enthusiast because that's what we really are here. So it's not, maybe this isn't indicative of the average consumer, right? Or the typical consumer who may be focusing on just price. We won't know the answer to this, if this is going to be successful, if this is going to change anything for Verizon at least not for another quarter and probably not through until the end of this year. So that is still to be determined. But there's so many other things to discuss, guys, and that's what we're going to do in the back half of this video. Does the Welcome Unlimited plan indicate something important about Verizon in its current state? Bad quarter one, all right? And they quite often, Q1s are their worst of the year. That really didn't sound off any alarms to me. Bad Q2s don't really happen. But when Verizon started doing all of this stuff, including starting this plan, plus the loyalty discounts, plus noticing and hearing reports of low foot traffic in stores, and, and there's a number of other things. I mean, this video is going to get really long if we go into all the details. There's so many reasons to believe that Verizon's Q2 is not going to play out very well, which explains maybe why they decided to finally do this. But here's my question. Is this going to be the saving grace for Verizon? Is this going to change the trajectory of their year? Cowan is reporting they expect Verizon to have 250,000 net ads this quarter. For Q2, I should say. Just wrapping up here, right, in June. I don't see a, a universe where they added 200 and 250,000 customers. I really don't. I think it's going to be an abnormally low quarter. Now, having a bad Q2 is unprecedented for Verizon. Having two bad quarters in a row would be absolutely stunning. I can't think of a quarter, consecutive quarter, you know, Q1, Q2, where, where this has happened to Verizon. So what is going on here? I guess the question is, is this a pricing problem for Verizon or is it a something else problem? Is there a value issue? Is there a network issue? What is happening? Why isn't Verizon resonating? with the consumer anymore. There's something that must be going on. 
We're just trying to figure out exactly what it is. We may not know until we get Q2 earnings. We may not know until the end of the year. But this is an attractive pricing, right, in terms of them becoming more competitive. But if this doesn't resonate with the consumer, it's not about price. This must be about something else. And, you know, I'm looking at all the different factors that go into evaluating a good quarter. I mean, I expect Verizon to add a lot of fixed wireless access subs. I'm expecting 200,000 plus, maybe 250,000. I mean, last quarter, in a partial quarter, they were able to add over 200,000, you know, it, when adding in their business additions, business lines. I don't know. I would be very intrigued to look into the future and look into a crystal ball and see what it is actually how things will play out Q2. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. Look, I'm looking forward to your comments. You guys can comment down below. You know, is this going to take Spectrum Mobile and Xfinity Mobile customers back? Is this going to take Base Essentials and T-Mobile Essential customers back? Is Verizon going to start taking the share back? Is it going to stop the bleeding? Is it going to be a growth vector? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this. Sound off in the comment section below. You'll have the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Uh, there are a lot of ways you can help out the channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Patreon page if you want to support us and get early access to content. And exclusive videos not found anywhere else, including live streams and podcasts. Uh, my Twitter handle is in the description. And all business inquiries can go to the Gmail address in the description box as well. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.